What is going on guys, it is YesArts here and today I will be showing you guys how to make a nether logo. The last time I did this, I created a simple N within a box, if you haven't seen it, it will be the last upload on my channel prior to this upload. For this one, I have a planned sketch unlike the last one. This is one that I posted on Instagram a while back, about 5 weeks ago, entitled Mind Games. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a circle. To create this circle, we're going to hold shift and alt and drag. Once you have this circle, we are going to make sure it has a black fill and no stroke, like so. Once you have this done, we're going to work out the spacing. For this logo, we're going to use a reference since I have it. If you don't have one, or if you just have a sketch, you can take a photo of the sketch and post it. It's just so you have a side-by-side -side view and you don't have to constantly look down and see what you did. So this is our end game here, what we plan to create. And before we start, I just would encourage you guys not to sell this logo as I created it and don't claim it's yours, etc. But I hope you guys do learn from this, so let's continue. Once we have this circle, we're going to make a square that is half the size of this circle. By dragging it from the center of the circle to the outside, it should snap on both. Once you have this, we're going to drag it above the circle. Make sure it snaps right onto that circle part right here. Once you have this, we can drag it once more upwards since we need to make this outer circle here. Once you have that, we're going to hold alt and drag the circle to duplicate it and drag it right over the other circle and snap it. We're going to drag it to the very closest edge of this square here. We're going to duplicate it once again, drag it to the center and drag it to the very outer now. Once you have this, we can select both of these, not the very inner one and use the path or the shape builder tool to remove the center by holding alt and clicking where you want to remove. Now we can drag this square once more out here to snap it just to get the spacing correct. Once you have this we are going to do it once more and we are going to use this circle. Once again we can duplicate it or create a new one. Once you put it in the center we can drag it to the exact same spot we did last time. Make sure it snaps. We are going to duplicate it we're going to duplicate it and drag it once again to the very outer. We're going to select both of them and remove it once again with the Pathfinder tool. Only these two circles though. Now we have something that looks like a bullseye or a target. Once we're going to do once we have this bullseye looking thing, we're going to drag this square to the center of the circles. Once we have the square in the middle of the circle, we're going to drag it out and we're going to also hold alt drag so it duplicates. Rotate it 90 by holding shift and dragging the sides. And we're going to put this in the center as well. Once you have this, we can use the Pathfinder tool after you've selected all of the layers. And remove these outer parts here. And also remove this piece, this piece, and this piece. Since we can see in here that we will need to do that. Once you have this, we're going to hold Alt and drag this piece right here. Right here. Make sure it snaps so you get the correct spacing. Once you have this, we're going to collect the circle. We're going to click the circle and remove this piece here with the shape builder tool. So it creates an insertion like that. Once you have this, we're going to duplicate this another rectangle wherever you want and remove this one right here by selecting them all and removing it. Make sure you put it above this one and snapped it. For all future cuts, you're just going to snap so I shouldn't have to say snapping anymore. Once you have that, we're going to duplicate this, drag it down here. And it kind of follows a pattern aside from this one piece right here. Once you have that, we can duplicate this one once again, drag it down here and snap it. Then we can also do it right here and cut it once again. Now that we have that, I also made this insertion here just so we could catch on to the pattern that we're doing on the inner part as well. We're going to be cutting here on this side since it's the opposite. We're also going to be cutting here, after we've duplicated this one, drag it up and snap it, of course. We're only going to cut this inner circle now. And now once more, we're going to cut right here, like so. And now that we've done that, we have all of them, and we have all of the cuts done. Now that we have all of that, we can add the colors. To add the colors, we simply add a background by making sure we have the square selected in this thing and dragging it from end to end of the document or the artboard. Now that you have that, we can also right click this artboard while you have the normal tool selected, go to arrange and then send to back or control shift J. Or my apologies. By selecting control shift 
and the outer the first square bracket. Once we have that, we can select the background we want. Right now, I already have the colors selected. If you have a client, he should have the colors for you. Or if you're doing it yourself, the, there are plenty of ways to find colors. You can get them yourself. There's plenty of alternatives. There's different sites that can provide you with colors, etc. But since we have these, we can simply use the eyedropper tool and select the colors within the document that we need, like so. It's extremely easy to create logos once you've already created them and you have that as a reference because you already know all the cuts and spacing that you want. I hope you learned from this by the shape builder tool as well as the ellipse and rectangular or square tools. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up or if you just like the logo or, or if you like videos or you want to see more, leave a thumbs up. It's really appreciated. I do appreciate all of the comments. I may not respond to them, but I definitely do read them 100%. And I appreciate every single one. I try to like them all, but sometimes I'm not on my computer and on my laptop I do not have my YouTube signed in, you know, effort. <laughs> I do appreciate all of the viewers. If you don't like this logo or you didn't like the video or something, feel free just to dislike the video or leave me constructive criticism. That is the most appreciative because I can learn from that and I will definitely continue to do these if I'm able to. Sorry for such a long outro again, I just want to express my gratitude towards you guys. I hope you guys have a great day or night or wherever you are and peace out.